So I got burnt sienna, cobalt blue, mm -hmm. French ultramarine blue, Antwerp blue, quinacridone red, and transparent yellow. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of throwing it all at it, right? And basically what we have, we have the three primary colors. And then, you know, the, the uh, burnt sienna is just a mix of the three. Um, so that's what I'm going to start with. And now I'm going to put a little bit of water in. Go on here, because you see what happens if you just go straight from the water. You see how much water you get on? And that's mm -hmm. how you get messed up. Mm -hmm. Back on here, and then... And I'm not worried about getting color everywhere. I'm just kind of dabbling in some, uh, some not color, but, you know, water. I don't mind if it hits some dry spots and some wet spots, because now we're going to go to town. Is it all wet or not all no, wet? No, no. You're so saying just, it's yeah, just, just off kind of on. off and on, and I don't even, you know, because half okay. the time when you're sitting here, you can't really even see. That's yeah. the whole point. I yeah. want it kind of... Yeah. Little surprises. So I happen to have burnt shin on, so I'm gonna get some of that on. And you can see already some places, see how it runs out, and other places it kind of gets mm -hmm. stuck. All right, so, so much for that. And let's put a little bit of the red in here. And I want more of the bright colors kind of around the tree and up along the some of these, and not so much out on the corners. The corners are not that important. And so a little bit of the yellow in, so it gets them a nice bright orange, right? Look at that. Ooh. There's that. And let's get some, and get some cobalt blue in here on the sides. The sides and the bottom, it's not so important. And let's get some French ultramarine in. Ooh. Mm. See? Not timid. <laughs> Get it in. So I'm kind of after. Now here I dipped in. I didn't even rinse my brush into the Antwerp. See how the Antwerp right away got wants to go green. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. It's just like dying to be green. I like to call that a wannabe green blue. It's one of those blues that really secretly wished it was green. Um, all right. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my burnt shenna. Start connecting some of these shapes. Take a little bit more of the antwerp here and there. You can see all the different colors I get. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Let's get a little bit more of the orange here. And I also know that when all my primary colors mix together, they neutralize, right? So you can see I'm already getting some neutrals. So I'm not so worried about that it's going to be too bright. Now I just want to make sure I don't get any hard lines in any of these places where I don't want it. There's that. See how bright and nice that is? Just getting rid of the white sparkles. Getting neutral here and there. There. All right. I think I'm good to go. A little darker in here, maybe. Get some French ultramarine blue. Good Shanna. So, there. Maybe I want to do a little bit more good Shanna here. There. Now I'm really thinking I'm good. And again, just want to see if I can get rid of that white sparkle while it's still damp. You can get rid of this afterwards, but it's kind of tedious. Okie dokie, wild and crazy. Let's see here. I'm grabbing my credit card and um, I'm gonna use the side and I'm gonna use kind of like a squeegee motion. Roll my sleeves up. <laughs> um, and I'm waiting for the shine to leave the paper a little. If it's too shiny, it's not, you know, the pigment's just gonna rush back in again. So I'm kind of biding my time. Um, let's try it here. And I would like to scrape so that I get light areas that could be hit by the light because what I'm doing is I'm scraping away pigment like that. And I'm just trying to come up with some little rocks and stuff yeah, in the foreground. Yeah. 
so I don't have to paint that in. Mm. And grab that one. And can you see how very mm. quickly you can get some texture in that's oh, going to read yeah. like rocks and different stuff? It's a much better use of your credit card. There you go, yeah. exactly. So you don't want to overdo it. And then um, I might use my pointy part and then scrape out, you know, there'll also be some little weeds and stuff in this area. And as long as it's wet, then the pigment runs back in and then I get dark markings. Mm -hmm. If I find a spot, let's see if we can find a spot where it's dried a little bit more. See how sometimes it'll leave a light spot, mm -hmm. which I want the variety, so that's perfect. And that's, you know, it's once you kind of get the hang of it, it's kind of fun. You don't want to overdo it. So I'm just gonna put in a few little ones. And you can see as the paper dries, it holds much better. There. Mm -hmm. There's that. Really nice. that and then uh, while that kind of settles in, I'm going to grab a, just a flat brush, and I'm just going to make it damp. And inside the trunk here, I might, just right where there's lines, I might try to scrub them out just a little bit. I don't want to use a scrubber brush, but sometimes these little areas where you have a hard line, they, they might show up in the trunk. So I'm going to try and see if I can get rid of that while I'm at it. Just a little bit like that. Good enough. You're trying to get the lines on the outside of the tree. No, I'm trying to get rid of that line that goes through the tree so that I don't have a hard line in there. When you start mm -hmm. painting over. Even though I'm going to paint over. dark Just over it. Sure. But sometimes these lines have a pesky um, tendency to kind of show Why up. Why don't you want to use a scrubber brush? Of the because texture, I don't the want, paper. I don't want to, um, yeah, I don't want to de destroy the paper. Mm -hmm. And if I get... Uh, the scrubber brush in there, it roughs up the paper and then it's very difficult to paint over it without it making some weird marks. Mm -hmm. So scrubber brushes are fine for final details when you're done painting. Okay. Yeah. What's a scrubber brush? That's a very stiff brush that can scrub out. That, that Like this. This is a scrubber brush. A bunch of scrubber brushes. Is it I don't, an oil painting brush? Or? No, they are called scrubber brushes, but old oil painting brushes, if you trim the hairs a little bit, they'll also work really well. But you can see they're really stiff, but they rough up the paper. Mm -hmm. So so that's for like final details. Yeah. Not, ha you know, when you still have things to do. And while I'm, I'm here, I could also show you that sometimes it's kind of nice to pick one of those dark edges. And actually, I could see I have. A bit of an edge here. If I could kind of continue that, I can doctor it up a little bit. Now it holds much better because it's it's dried more and it doesn't run so much anymore. I'm just kind of finding a dark color, and I could go in and kind of bring out edges a little bit more, make them a little bit more prominent mm -hmm. if I want to or fix them if they have the wrong shape. But you don't want to do too much here. It, you just want to have a little something going on because it's once we get the trees in, it's about them, and then we're going to put them, we'll put some cast shadows in, and then we're going to call it a day. The reason why you have it so bright here is the light. Yeah, or you want to light. focus. Yeah. Like that's your focal point. That's my focal tree. point with the tree. So I want something bright, and then the yeah. tree's going to be dark. So, you know, I take a lot of artistic liberty. I am not personally interested in painting a photorealistic painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I always like to say I paint the feeling of a place, yeah. not yeah. so much yeah. it's like there was the rock and there was this and there was that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, so you get the feeling of the place. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. And once again, this color back here was the Yeah, so I took the yellow. I took the yellow okay. and the red. And which yellow and red is this? Uh, so it's my transparent yellow and my quinacridone red, but whatever yeah. red or yellow you have. And I just did that because that's just a step right. up from from yeah. the burnt sienna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can see how, because I threw all the colors at it, it neutralizes. 
but at the end you can still <coughs> put these together by adding more colors. Absolutely, if you want to. Absolutely, like I have it a little too bright there, but I'm no the mask uh, the the match is probably gonna cut, cover that up. See, but that's the thing. You don't really want bright colors like that right at the edge because no. that really takes your eye there. So what would I do? Well, I would grab what's the complementary color to blue is orange, that's and burnt sienna is a dirty orange. So if I put that over, I'd be good to go. And you can see. Not that I took a great care in it. See how that kind of mm -hmm. toned it right? Helps, uh, yeah. Took, took my eye away from there. All right. So, the tree trunk. I already did my puddles that I'm going to use for my tree trunk, and I'm basically going to use burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. I'm going to put burnt sienna on the sunny side. That would be this side. Um... And then the French ultramarine on here. And of course, I want them to 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 blend. Mm -hmm. um, and since they are like a complementary color pair, they will neutralize and make it dark brown. So what I usually do is I take a little bit of water on my brush and I just run a little bit of water down the center of the trunk and some of the branches just to give my colors a little place to run. And then I'm gonna go in and put the burnt shenna on. And now I need a little bit more pigment, so hopefully I don't have it too watered down. No, I think I'm good. So now we need more pigment. Okay, so let's put the burnt shenna on here. And you can see how it flows out because I put a little bit of that water on and it stays put here on the edge, which is where I want a hard edge because, you know, that's gonna, that's the tree trunk. And I want a little bit up there. And I can go a little bit up here. Goes kind of like that. And then it goes kind of like that. And it goes a little bit like this. And as always, it helps when you talk to yourself. <laughs> and here and here, maybe a little bit up there. A lot of it, you know, you won't be able to see because it's going to be covered up by the folds. I'm not going to bother cleaning out my brush, but I'm sticking the tip into the French ultramarine bl uh, blue now. But not cobalt. Not cobalt. Cobalt won't go dark enough. Now I'm after dark. And cobalt is a wimp. He doesn't go dark. He just stays pretty light. And so here is my tree trunk. And it can stop kind of like here. And get a little bit of the blue up here. Can you see how they're blending together mm -hmm. and they're giving me a nice oh, yeah. dark? So they're kind of painting the tree for me. And by doing it this way, I'm already a little bit more of the blue. I'm already getting a shadow side and a and a and a light side for the tree, and they're blending together nicely. So here's that a little bit up here, there. You can put a little bit in here and here on the bottom. And because I put that little bit of water in, it helps the colors mix and mingle. Maybe there's another little branch there. Who knows? I can also do a little bit more here. A lot of it, again, you know, will disappear. And actually, there's also here, so I forgot about that. So let's put one in here. A little bit more burnt shenna, just on this side. It might be like here. Right, take the water out and before it dries on me I never like my bottom of trees or rocks for that matter to have a hard edge because that's not how it looks then it looks like I stuck it on it comes out of the ground so you want to have like just a soft edge that disappears not that blue to blend it with the ground yeah to blend it with the ground because there's weeds and rocks and stuff yeah. like that in front of it, so you can't exactly see. Okay, so now that things are beginning to dry a little bit, I have blue on, and I'm going to stick it into the burnt shinner so I have like both colors on. Make sure I don't have too much water. And now I'm going, that was not enough. Let's see. A little bit more blue. So now what I'm, I'm just 
dipping my tip in, do you see that the tip of my brush in, because what I'm trying to do is trying to darken some areas. And because the trunk is still um, damp, the color will spread on its own. Maybe there's a little bit like that. And if it gets too blue, don't worry about it. Just go back and put a little bit of a burnt sienna on and vice versa. I want it darker up there on the, you know, I'm always thinking about, you know, which side is away from the light that gets more blue. The light, the lighter side gets more burnt sienna. And I'm just kind of dabbing around. And if I, if I have an area where I think, oh, it looks too blue, I just dab a little bit of the burnt sienna in. This should be maybe a little thicker right here. And now I'm just fixing shape. But see how nicely it blends? Mm -hmm. And by having that little bit of color variance gives the tree some shape. And now I took most of the pigment out and just want to fine tune that. And I think I want it a little darker still. Both colors there. And see how it creeps in and create a nice texture. Yeah, I think that's good mm. enough for that tree. Mm -hmm. Thinking it could be a little okay. fatter right there. I'm just, so right now I'm just looking at the shape. And you know, these trees, they do look very, very dark uh, when you look at them. And um, a little bit of darkness here. But I think I'm pretty good. And now I can't see the two others that I put in, but I'll just come up with them. So this one's coming from behind this hill. So that would be a hard edge, right? Because this hill mm -hmm. is um, obscuring. I can't see the bottom of the tree. So there you would have a hard edge because it's coming from behind. On It's growing down here on the other side of this hill. And so I think it went like this and kind of like up like that. I'm just making it up. And where I definitely don't want it to stop is right on this line. line. Mm -hmm. That's called a tangent line. And we definitely want to avoid tangent lines. They create tension. And I'm not here to uh, make you uneasy. I'm here to tell you that this is such a lovely place. You should go sometime. <laughs> um, you know, some painters, you know, it all depends on what your purpose is as a painter. But mine's not to make you uneasy. So I don't like tangent lines. And also, you know, you also want, it's nice to have these two because I feel it does balance the painting a little bit. Because if I only had this tree here, I do feel that it goes a little bit that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's why I like to put these Could two little be, in. Um, lighter than darker. No, than because this is the light's coming here and it's silhouetted. And it's in the it's, yeah, it's yeah, in the shadow. So that's why, okay. and I don't want to give it a sunny side and stuff because I can't really see that that yeah, far away. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just I have decided that in my interpretation, it's just going to be more or less silhouetted against the sky. Okay. And so I'm giving it a little fellow tree here. And that's also coming from down here. And it goes out like that. Just make sure that they are, you know, not all the same. And so I'm just using a little bit on my tip of my brush of those same two colors, but keeping it more on the, on the cool side, so to speak. And quite dark. So down here and then a little bit up there. Since I can't see my lines, I've got to come up with what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. So there on those, I'm going to put, I can put the, the, the foliage on right away. And I am going to make it a little greenish. But can I ask a question? Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. you do the shadow right away with those colors or not necessarily? No, because I'm going to, I am going to put cast shadows on. Um, but I'm not going to have my shadows, uh, my shadows can be more blue, blue, oh, blue, okay, purple. Okay, so it doesn't matter, okay. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. I don't like to have my shadows the same color as the okay. thing that's casting the shadow. Their shadows are usually more bluish, I find. Blue, purpley, okay. that's usually what I do for shadow color. Okay. But good question. So I'm going to use a little bit of burnt shenna, and then I'm going to use 
a little bit of the uh, Antwerp because Antwerp actually, as I said to you before, Antwerp is Antwerp is one of those colors. It just it's dying to be green. It wants to be green. So I'm making it a very neutral green here, what but you dark. See the Antwerp with? with the burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Okay. Yeah. If I did it with the yellow, it'd be way too green. Oh, I see. So now I'm just gonna put some little shapes like you know those. Whatever that, I don't know if you call them foliage or needles or whatever. Whatever they are. Whatever they are, and have to go up here because I really didn't want to have a tangent line there. I mean, you can do a smaller brush, but this one has a good tip, so I think I can kind of get away with it. I just want to give it some little spiky thing which is sticking up here. Just that a little bit more here and just like that don't be too fiddly with this part because again they're far away just as long as they silhouettes read somewhat all right we're good a little flick of the wrist need to roll it Sometimes, you know, you need to kind of roll your brush like this to get that tip back again, like that. I think I'm better now. Let's see. And you could certainly go, and again, there was a tangent line, so let's get rid of that. So if I have to sh change the shape a little bit of my tree, the way I came up with it, that's totally fine. There's that. A little bit here. And then pretty soon I'm gonna call that done. A little bit on the other side, why not? Yeah, those are fine. Okay, so uh, while I wait for it to dry completely, I'm going to go in and build myself a shadow color. So I have French ultramarine blue. I have the Antwerp here. Might just go with these two. And then I want to make it, in my world, Shadows are more blue, but not like blue like that. So I'll put a little bit of red in. Kind of a dark purpley color. And then gray it down a little bit with a burnt shimmer. There. That's kind of my shadow color. See that kind of gray down mm. purpley color? Mm -hmm. To me, that would be a good color for shadow. Did you repeat the colors that you used? Yeah. I used uh, a little bit of the Antwerp. French ultramarine blue, a hint of the uh, quinacridone red, and then I grade it down with a little bit of burnt shina. So basically all those colors are in my painting. Mm -hmm. You don't want to grab something that's not even in the rest of the painting at this stage. You know, it's the last thing I'm putting on pretty much. Um, so I think this one's fine. That's fine. And then lights coming from here. Shadows are the darkest right underneath too much pigment right underneath the subject that's casting the shadow and then remember this is kind of not like a straight um, ground it's not flat it's you know gonna be all bumpy right so you don't want to have your trees go completely straight so give it some bumps and then goes over a rock and then goes like this and then here there's some, you know, little side branches. So I wiggle it. And then there's also some little ones going out here. That should be a hard edge, huh? Should be a hard edge. Um, cast shadows have hard edges. Um, form shadows have, um, soft, have, have soft edges or lost edges. But right here, I do like to kind of fuss it out a little bit. Don't want to be too, again, literal on that. I have this because I'm thinking there's like a little rock in front there. And then here, and then there's some of all this fuss going on, right? The foliage that we haven't painted yet. So I'm going to put a little bit of that out also, just a little bit like that. And I don't go too crazy with, you know, trying to be exact. And you don't have to because there's grasses, weeds, rocks, all sorts of things sticking up here. And they are obscuring some of those shadows. 
So I d and again, I'm out on the corner here, so I certainly don't want anything that's like too um, precise and stuff like that. There is that one. And then these two little, they'll throw a little bit of a shadow also. So kind of same direction. And so here. And then I'm just gonna kind of, and shadows are the darkest right you know, closer to the object that's casting the shadow. So, and then again, I'm just gonna fuddle out a little something, something there. Not being too precise and not too dark. And if I think it gets too fuddly, I usually take my spray bottle and I spray into it a little bit so that it kind of obscures the, the shadow a little bit. Could be a little fatter. And then the same here. Give it a little bumpy because, you know, it's over rocks and who knows what there. And it kind of disappears in here. Into all this other stuff. And I'm going to call that good enough. There. That's kind of what it is. And then you gotta wait for that to dry before you take that. Yeah, off. and this is actually dry enough. But I wanted to yeah, get get that, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna take that off and show you the last part. Right, so yeah, I probably, I think I'll probably use this liner brush because it, you know, has long and skinny hairs, holds a lot of pigment, but it has a nice point. But now I'm, I'm after those spiky things. So I'm gonna start with my lightest color, and here I'm gonna go in on dry. So I just load up this brush with some of that yellow color. That's my transparent yellow, but whatever yellow you like to use. And I start usually start with the yellow. And then, you know, I go, see it's a flick of the wrist. So I just kind of put some yellow on, try and get some of these spiky things. And, you know, I might have some of the white left over, but that's, that'll be little sparkles. Because, you know, this side of this folders can, you know, catches a little light. So here's that. I'll just do a couple of them here. And then um, I'm going to dab into um, some of my um, French ultramarine blue. And I didn't rinse out my brush. Now why don't you use cobalt? Cobalt, I, it's not going to go dark enough for you what I want. Yeah, because I wanted. To, yeah, I want to have questions. some a little bit darker. And uh, I have all this yellow on. So can you see how it's already kind of, it hits some places where the yellow is wet. Mm -hmm. Then it hits some dry places. So I get a variety of colors by doing it like this. Instead of mixing myself a green and then going into town, it's gonna be super flat. So here's that. And a little bit more here. And so I just do some little areas at a time. And then I'm gonna let those dry. And you can see I also, you know, flip my paper around. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the blue on. I'm kind of running out, and and I'm just putting the color on. You know, on, on the tip there, the blue on the tip. And you can see now it gets like real blue. That's fine. Of course, I can just put some yellow over it, and then it's gonna go green if I think it looks too blue. And see how it's nice to have some of those little white sparkles. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the lights hitting it, mm -hmm. and. They tend to be a little darker on this side away from the light. All right, so let me just show you how I, I was, uh, would put in the, the darkest of them. And then I'm gonna dab my brush. I haven't even rinsed it yet. That's fine. I'm gonna take a little bit of the um, burnt sienna. And then I'm gonna take some of my ant whip. Uh, a little bit more ant whip. If it doesn't go green enough, you can always stick a little yellow in it. But I want it quite dark. It's kind of a good color, I like it. If I like it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> so, again, make sure that, so now I was back on here, just make sure it's not too wet. And now this is probably kind of damp. Um, let's go in. Is that the way you do like palm trees? Yes, yes, exactly. So it's not going dark enough for me. So I might have to stick a little bit of... So that's Antwerp and Burnt Sienna? Yeah, and now I put a little bit of the um, 
French ultramarine in. It's mainly because I think it's too watery. There, so let's try it again. But you don't have to let it dry in between. No, it's best, to, I think, because I like it to hit some dry spots and some wet spots. So some places you get some soft mm -hmm. uh, lines and some places you get really hard lines. But I, I want the vi variation. And so now what I'm going to do is, because it's not really going quite as dark as I want it, some of the places. I mean, I like these, but I need a little bit more oomph. So then I'm going to go into my indigo. Oh, <gasps> that one is so dark. Indigo. And it's basically because I had a little too much water in, I think. See how thick this is? Mm -hmm. It's thick. Okay, so this is for the serious stuff. <laughs> so we don't want everything to go dark, so let's just test it out. Yeah, yeah. That's see I need a few little dark areas like this. That's what I'm after. So what that's you that's using? straight okay. indigo? That's indigo. Uh, with a little bit of, I put a little bit of yellow in. What do we use in place of indigo if we don't know? Uh, well then you just have to uh, you can use Antwerp, Antwerp or or French ultramarine blue, you just need to have it it's because I had it watered down too much. And would, would you just do one section at a time you're just showing us now? I'm just showing you now, and then I would probably jump around because, you know, okay. then I can kind of build it up. Yeah. And that way, if I find an area like here, finding that it was a little too uh, damp, I just go work somewhere else, and then I can okay. go back. So I kind of jump back and forth a lot. But that's all it is. And you can see by doing it this way, kind of slowly building up the color, that's how you get that volume on it. Mm -hmm. And it looks nice and spiky. And I'll work on mine. Uh, oh, and you know what you can do also? Sometimes if you find that you get it like too many dark areas, take your little credit card, use the pointy part, and then you can also scrape out. Ooh. Okay. And you know, that way you can regain some of the lights okay. if they, you know, if they disappeared. Yeah, I remember I did that on the other one and that worked like a charm. So. I'm just going to finish this. I'm at home in my studio now, um, and I just wanted to wrap this up for you, the one we did in class. And um, I went ahead and painted some more of the foliage on this um, Joshua tree, but I thought I'd just show you with the, with the camera zoomed in a little bit more so you can maybe see the details better when I apply the paint so let me just zoom in for you and sorry for the shaking here there we are that should do it so I use my rigger brush and I'm going to start out with a little bit of yellow I have transparent yellow and um, I just flick my wrist like this, kind of in those spiky motions. I need a little bit more in here. And so some places I hit the white, other places I hit the blue of the sky, which is perfect because that also turns green. So no problem there. And uh, there's that. And then I'm not even going to bother cleaning off my brush. I'm going to dab it into a little bit of the French ultramarine blue and I'm going to do the same thing. Just flick my wrist and I jump around on my painting. because now where I have the yellow just applied, it's going to still be damp. And make the colors flow. So I want it darker on this side here, away from the light. If it gets too green, like I just did, or blue, rather, I just put a little bit of yellow on top. And there you have it. Keep a little bit more here. Uh, just until 
I'm satisfied. And um, I'll take a little bit of the Antwerp on my dirty brush. Dirty meaning that it has French ultramarine blue and the yellow on it still. And so I get a nice green, another type of green. And I'm after all sorts of different shades of green. And just make sure that the little leaves here are nice and spiky. So a little bit more here. Now I want to go a little darker, especially here on this side, because that's away from the light. And the same in here. And I like that I have some of the nice sparkles still from the white that I masked out. Of course some of these little pointy leaves, they're going to be reflecting the light. And now I'm going to go in and do a little bit of that uh, indigo. What's this one here? Super dark and with a little bit of the yellow on and uh, just build up some of these darks. That's going to make the lighter parts look lighter. That's how that works. So that's going to make these lighter parts look lighter. And a little bit out there, down here. And pretty soon I should probably stop and reevaluate. Load it up again. Put a little bit more on. So I have the uh, indigo and I have a little bit of uh, the transparent yellow one also, so that it'll go more green. And so just getting a few more in here. And pretty soon I should probably call it a day. You know, I don't want to overdo these things. And let's see, that looks pretty good I think. I like it. So my motto is, if I like it, I leave it. So I should uh, heat that. I think I need a little bit more yellow here. There. And just a few more little ones here. Alright, good enough. And then um, so now I'm going to hold it up so you can see better. See how you get that nice color variation. And I think from a distance it reads really nicely. So we're going to leave that. And um, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. There. Like that. Um, I wasn't so happy with the shadow that I got in on that one. Uh, those two little trees there, I think I could do a little bit of a better job. And I still have my shadow color in a little puddle over here. It was French ultramarine blue, a little bit of Antwerp, and then it was uh, made kind of purpley from uh, putting in some quinacridone red, and then I grayed it down a little bit um, by putting in some um, of the burnt shinna. So I'm just trying to just give it a little bit more oomph, as I like to call it, and I just dab that off, and that was a little too much, so then I can dab in again. There. Just didn't feel that I really had gotten that quite the way I wanted. And it really helps also getting the cast shadows on these two little trees, because they're actually uh, on the other side of this little hill 
And so that's why they were hard edged and it, you know, they kind of looked a little stuck on. But I feel that now with the shadow on, that took care of that. So, there. And um, I think we can pretty much wrap that up. The only thing I wanted to show you is um, a painting is never completely done just like that. There is always like little things that needs to be tweaked. And I see I have a lot of little things that need to be tweaked here. And what I wanted to show you is, you know, very often there's like little white sparkles in places where, you know, where the pigment didn't cover. And sometimes those little sparkles can be, you know, uh, a blessing. However, like some of the ones I have here, they're not really a blessing. They are just kind of distracting. Um, because they're in places where, you know, there's, there's absolutely no reason for, for there to be a sparkle. So then what I do is, and you just saw, is I go in with just a damp brush. doesn't really matter what, what kind of brush it is. Um, a damp brush and then I just very gently with the tip just kind of smudge it back and forth a little bit just to get rid of that white sparkle and that way your eye doesn't get stuck there or drawn there you know we want to uh, direct where the viewers eyes go and if these little white sparkles are in areas where we really don't want them to look we should get rid of them sometimes as I said earlier they are a blessing uh, because they are in a perfect spot where there would be a little sparkle of reflection. The other thing that sometimes happens is that, uh, like here, I have a little bit of a fussiness. There's a little spark where it doesn't, shouldn't go, and then there was a little overlap of the colors right here. And again, sometimes that would work just perfect, but here I, I don't really think it brings anything to the party. So I'm going to try and get rid of it. And that's exactly the same method. It's just a um, damp brush, not wet, just damp. And I'm just going to kind of smooch it around a little bit and see if I can get rid of that hard line there and that sparkle. And I think I can. And sometimes when it's like paint that has run over, where you didn't want it and made it darker, you want to just stab it out. And so now it doesn't draw my attention in a negative way. So I'm happy with that. A little bit there. And so that's usually, you know, depending on how big of a painting you have and how much of this you have going on, that's usually another, you know, half hour to two hours, sometimes even longer if it's a, a big painting. But I find it's well worth it because it just gives it that finished look and touch where there's nothing that sticks out that shouldn't be sticking out. And so I'll be spending a little time doing this. And then the other thing I thought I wanted to show you is that um, sometimes when you have a big sky like this, um, it's kind of nice to... Um, throw a few birds in. You can see I did it in this one here. Three little birds flying around. And um, here I think I'm going to put in a few birds. And so I'm going to take my shadow color and dull it down even more so it's kind of like a grayish black. Did that here. I just put a little bit more burnt shinna in that mixture I had um, of French Ultramarine, Antwerp, Quinacridone Red, and Burnt Shinner. So I just grated it down a little bit more. Okay, so I, I used to do them like, it's kind of like eyebrows. And then here's, this could be some big buzzards. Who knows? Put it in like that. So there's one. And um, uneven numbers are always better than even. So here's another. It's 
So I'm going to give you three birds, just like I did in the first one that I showed you there. So one more. And then far out here is going to be another one. It's heard that there's, you know, a meal here, so it's coming from further away. When you're closer down to the horizon line, they, the birds get smaller, and the higher up, they get bigger, because then they're closer to you. That's uh, kind of how that works with birds in the sky, so I thought I'd show you that. And it's, you really don't want to mess around with them too much, because that's... You can't see very many details on birds nor need it flying around like that. But I think, didn't that liven it up? I think it did. So um, I think I'm going to call it a day now. Uh, and so I have the tracing. Um, you can see it in the beginning of the part one video. And um, it's going to be on my website, uh, beautyonlocation.com. So you can download it if you feel like um, trying to paint this painting. And otherwise, you can just, uh, you know, find some photos from uh, Joshua Tree National Park in California. All right. Happy painting.